Yo, this girl right here is super, super, super. All right, so this is DJ Toro One K, RoughHouseRadio.com. I am here live on Skype with Darcy Donovan. Hello, Darcy. Hello. I was wondering if you were gonna come dressed as a werewolf or not. Oh hell no! That's like six hours of makeup. <laughs> I saw the pictures and I said, I wonder if she's coming as a werewolf. So just to give everybody who who doesn't know, uh, Darcy Donovan, um, World Peace Ambassador, CEO of a clothing company in LA, uh, very well-rounded singer, dancer, actress, model, former Miss Nashville, Tennessee, very impressive. Thank you. Um, You were in Confessions of a Dangerous Mind with George Clooney, Showtime with Robert De Niro, Nip Tuck, and of course my favorite, Anchorman with Will Ferrell. Love that movie. We'll talk about that at the end because I know a bunch of our viewers had questions on what it was like to work with that guy. So, thank you. Uh, just <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking my uh, coffee right now while well, we speak. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> we'll see how you change. <laughs> we'll see how you change throughout the interview. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Bring, <sighs> see if it brings the werewolf out. Yeah, there we go. All right, I mean, he- I don't know if you've ever had goji juice, but it, it that's my thing. <laughs> No, I have not. I'm gonna try it though. Oh, you gotta try. Oh, here comes my dog. She wants some. Aw. Say hi, Bella. Tell everybody hello. I think you have a few dogs, right? I don't think you want. Everybody thinks that she's like the werewolf from Twilight. <laughs> she looks she's... like it. Yeah, she does. So she's she's a trip. But you know, she, I got her. She's a. Um, I got her from the kill shelter. Aw. So yeah, I know. She's like was a little bitty thing and now she's this huge monstrosity that thinks she's like this small so oh, <laughs> but she's a sweetie she might talk throughout the show and say hi to everybody perfect so. that'd be great took her I, I take her sometimes with me on set and sometimes when I'm on tour she comes with me because she she gets really like sad and oh. she won't eat when other people are taking care of her so Hope you guys don't mind. <laughs> no, nobody minds. We're big dog, big dog lovers. Yay, yay. So musically, um, most people have recently heard your single, 2012, Super Bad, which I really, really enjoy that signal. I'm actually going to be throwing it in some of my mixes. Um, okay. Definitely. And then State of Shock in 2009 and Distraction in 2008, which are all available on iTunes, of course. So... Yeah. I was reading a lot about you, um, your early work. You started at eight years old, which I thought was pretty impressive, uh, with your first role. And were you, would you consider yourself more of an actress first or a singer first? Because you're you're so multi talented. Well, the interesting thing is that people ask me that, and it's like, this is the analogy that I give people because I do get that a lot. I've even got it from agents like asking me things, but it's like, okay, if you have if you have twins, you know, you have kids. And you have a twin, and you have twins. Who do you love better? You know, if it's a boy or it's a girl, you're gonna love the boy more than the girl. No, they're your twins, they're your babies. And I mean, that's how the music and the acting is to me. I mean, it's like they are my children, and it's like I, I've given birth to them, and I love them and nurtured them over the years. And so it's like, you know, I was growing up, I had a single mother, and you know, she worked two jobs, and I sat here and I would. Um, do these little acting skits and then I would like do these cool like shows to you know because I was scared (laughs) I was like you know I I was I was like I want to sit here and and entertain myself and so I'd put all my stuffed animals on on uh, the couch and I'd do these like elaborate like arena shows you know thinking I was like the next Madonna or Michael Jackson you know nice (laughs) <laughs> I mean, and that's the thing is it's like, to me, it, it was just something that I initially did when I was a kid. You know, my mom said that I was always dressing up in her clothes and I would get on the mantle with a microphone and start singing and, you know, doing all these crazy things. And it's like, it wasn't prompted. Does that make sense? It's yeah. like, I just did it. So, you know, I, I think, I think you're born with certain things. I mean, I don't get nervous when I'm on stage. I mean, I'm around... Listen, I'm around A-list celebrities all the time that I hear this same mantra of, I get nervous, and, I, and I'm thinking, why the hell you get nervous? Why? <laughs> why? If this is something that you do for a living, and, you know, I, I just do it. You know, it's just go and, and have fun, and it's like, it's just something that's like swimming. It's like a fish. You don't tell a fish, how do you swim? Do you know how to swim? No, the fish knows how to swim. It's like, of course. 
you know, I enjoy uh, being on stage and it's just something that I guess I would say that was just born in me, you know, and I, and I love both. Just to answer your question, they're my babies. I, I don't choose one or the other. I mean, to me, it's like Winnie Houston, Winnie Houston was uh, doing her world tour when she was filming Bodyguard. Yep, yep. You know, Prince. I mean, think about Prince back in the day. Purple Rain, man. I yeah. mean, that, they play that on like Netflix all the time. And you, you I mean, it, it was in the day. I, I'm thinking it, I know it was a huge hit. So, of course. You know. Excellent. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely. It. There we go. <laughs> you're definitely a performer with all the things that you do. So that's good. Um, how did you. I juggle, though, Mike. I'm not a good juggler. That's what agents are for, right? And <laughs> assistants. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, hey, Kim, juggle. No, I'm kidding. I need, I need a juggler. Uh, working on it. <laughs> so what, uh, what influence got you into music? I mean, what would you say your biggest influence uh, as far as music goes? What was that? Um, I would definitely – it was actually my granddad who really? did it. Yes. My grandfather is – I mean, he – well, he was an amazing man, and he basically got me my first guitar – and um, I mean, he would take me every day to my lessons and everything. And it was like from that, I ended up uh, getting into like a talent show, and you know, it everything it kind of expanded from there. But I mean, that I mean, that was basically the first thing was was uh, my granddad. I mean, buying the guitar was like I don't know, it was like one of those pinnacle points. It's probably like when Elvis bought a microphone or. <laughs> I don't know, Madonna brought her first pointy bra. <laughs> right. It was a pinnacle point, you know. So yeah, that's pretty much what started it. I would. I mean, that's that's my first recollection. Now, did did growing up in Nashville? I mean, obviously, such a musical town. Did that have any type of influence on you? Well, yeah, musical. I mean, Nashville is like. I mean, it's country music USA. But see, people what people don't understand is that we've got. Uh, I mean, we've had Selena was there when she, you know, was alive. I mean, she was doing her music there. You've got like a lot of people that are moving that are uh, people in hard rock, pop, um, country, you know, live there, country rock. Um, I mean, heavy metal. A lot of people live in Nashville and they and they work out of Nashville. So it's like to me, it's a huge, big city. And I mean, it's I, I've. I've done a lot of music in Nashville, and um, I mean, everywhere you go on Printer's Alley, um, I mean, Second Avenue, I mean, there's just live bands and great music. That's great. Yeah. Nice. And everybody needs to go check out Nashville. It's probably a place that everybody in the business needs to go retire. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, what's, the, uh, what's, the, what's the DJ scene like there? The DJs, you know, it's, it's a mixture. It's it's really crazy. I mean, you have like the you know the rave and rave, rave DJs, and yeah. then you've got like the country DJs, and then you've got I mean, you just got all kinds of different DJs there. It's crazy. Yeah, I can't. Sp I, I don't know. I shouldn't say I can't. I can, but I I don't spin country, so I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm telling you, you would be surprised at all the different radio stations. Like Y107 is huge in Nashville and I mean they play like I mean everything but country really yeah and they're huge I mean Y107 has uh, they have like it's called the Riverfront Festival where you know bands will get together I actually performed down there one year wow. and um, I mean you have like all kinds of huge bands that go down there and perform and everything so I mean from hard rock to rock to bluegrass to country so I mean, it's a well diverse town, and I mean, it's not just for country. Yeah, but, of course. You know, but it's it's kind of gotten its uh, how would you say it? It's stigmatized as hey, you know. Of course. But it, is, it is country USA. I mean, anybody that wants to break into country usually goes there. That's right. So. And don't don't get me wrong, I do enjoy country music. I actually lived in the South for quite a while, so I I do Where? enjoy it. Where? Uh, Virginia. Oh, cool. Yeah. Virginia. Yeah, that's where in Virginia. Uh, I lived uh, on the coast for a while, and then I lived out by Lynchburg, out in the mountains. I had a friend from Roanoke. Yep, yep, I know where that is. Virginia. So Excellent. remember that. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of the artists I know everybody likes to ask, you know, other artists obviously. What artists uh, would you say have been a big influence on you, as far as your performance style? Um, 
Well, okay. Oh, my art, other artist, you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely say Madonna. Yeah. I like Madonna. I love Janet Jackson. Um, you know, Michael Jackson to me was just huge, just for the way that he did all all his different music. But the, I mean, I've got to tell you that I mean, I love Dolly Parton too. People always say when I come to the shows, people go, "Oh, so tell us about you know Darcy's show and this and that." And it's like Dolly Parton attitude with a Janet Jackson Madonna show nice. with, you know, it's got, I mean, you know, all kinds of different uh, music style is, I mean, it's like, could be Nicki Minaj, Katy Perry meets Pink. Nice. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, not what everybody thinks is out there. I don't like to be like everybody else. I like to be different. Yeah, and, I can, and when you listen to, to the different albums that you've released over time and the songs, you can see all those different styles that come out in that. And that's one of the things I liked as I was listening to it is the change over all your music. Well, I don't know what it is, but I, I mean, I don't know. It was funny because I just had, uh, I, I wouldn't call him a fan. He's basically family. And his name's Charlie Singleton. And he did, uh, oh, back in the day, it was the 80s, he did, uh, what was the name of it? Somebody tell me. Uh, Cameo. He did Cameo. He did a word up, and he um, he's a you know he's a really good friend of mine, and he yeah. says you know, you have so many different looks. He's like you know it it blows my mind, and even I, even with music, I, I just I don't know. It's like I try to sound different and bring a different like tone to uh, every time I'm I'm doing music. I think the thing that people don't understand is it's like listen. God bless you, Mariah Carey singers out there. God bless you, okay? But that's not me, and I don't want to be that way. I mean, I don't want to go, Ooh! you know, <laughs> reaching high notes and, you know, I mean, I want people to be in the car, you know, singing and going, yeah, man, I can sing this, you know, Ooh! you know, that, I mean, that's not me. Now, don't, don't, I mean, there's people out there that love that, that's great, you know, but, uh, I don't want to have like, you know, invisible balls that I'm holding to reach up to an octave higher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we have an excellent voice, so I'm sure you probably could do it if you wanted to. Well, thank you. Yeah, I can. But I mean, to me, it's like, um, to me, tone is everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like if, if you have a crappy tone, then forget it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you meet people and it's like, hey, you know, oh, she's a good looking woman. And, hey, my name is Sally. How you doing? I'm going to sing this song tonight. You know, you're, just, you're like, what the hell? What? Yeah, I have, I have a crappy tone. That's why I'm a DJ and not a singer. So uh, you got a great voice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if you ever think about, you know, doing the phone sex thing, you could do that. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Well, Hi. Sexy. If Rough House Radio doesn't work out, maybe we'll change the site over. DJ, DJ by night, you know, sex phone operator during the day, you got it. Get all bases covered. Nice. Yeah, yeah and we just plugged it, so, you know, there you go. Just in case. <laughs> you're going to get some girls going, hi, Micah, I'm just calling because I want to hear your voice. <laughs> what my partner would love that. So, <laughs> what, uh, the newest. My partner's probably going, you don't do that at home. You don't do that at home. I met my business partner on the website, oh. actually. <laughs> All right. So your uh, your new song has got some rap in it. Um, I liked it. I thought it was really good. What's the what was like the influence to to put that in? Because I didn't really hear that in some of your other songs. Well, I actually did one song called um, "Helping Karma Along," and that song, I mean, I was rapping in it. But um, with distraction, this new one, it's like you know, added my ump to it, mm -hmm. and. Um, because the other one was, this is more of a, a faster paced beat. The it other is. one, a little more of a medium. I mean, I don't know, a lot, and I was really surprised. As an artist, I mean, what surprises me most is you never know what people like. You really don't. So it's like, I'm always intrigued by, I'll, I'll, I'll um, you know, have three songs. I'll always put it out. I'll give it to all my friends or I'll have a party and I'll say, listen, you know, I'm buying food drinks for everybody, you know, snacks, uh, gift bags. Just want you guys to come here. I want you to give me your honest feedback. Which songs do you like? And I mean, it is crazy to just what people like and what, you know, the song that you think is the hit is not the hit. <laughs> the song that you may like, even as a DJ, 
you know, that you think, oh, this is a great song, you'd be surprised what everybody else thinks. Oh, so yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, it, there's a um, huge story, you know, about that in Nashville. Um, the Judds, I guess when they came out with one of their first albums, one of the record label, I guess, sent the album over and said, hey, play this. And they by accident played the wrong, uh, the right side, yeah. And what happened is, is that when they played the wrong side, everybody heard the wrong song but loved it. So what the label thought was going to be the hit was actually the song that the DJ played by accident. Nice. You have history, and then I mean they became huge. Of course. So it's like, you know, sometimes it's the accidents that happen that make history. Yeah. You know, so you never know. Definitely. Like I said, you know, that sex phone operator thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> keeping my keeping my options open. It was just we had an interview. It came out. There you go. Next thing you know, you're the next like huge sex phone or operator conglomerate. There, there you go. Is there really a big sex phone operator conglomerate though? I don't know. It's funny because one of the production guys and I were we were uh, I can't remember the conversation, but we were making a joke about it, and. He said something. He's like, "Oh, well, I guess if I drop this boom mic, I guess you know, I guess I'm gonna have to get another part-time job or something." And I said, "Well, I said you can always be a sex phone operator." <laughs> and he goes, "He goes, he goes, uh, he goes. Are those still in business?" I said, yeah. "I don't." I said, "You see them on, you know, television all the time, you know." So he was like, "Oh, I guess you do." So that was that was what. That's why that got brought up, everybody. Just so you know. <laughs> So, as far as um, live performances, I'm curious, what is your most memorable live performance? Oh, uh, let's see, the memorable, the most memorable. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, how, how old was I? Yeah, I was it, was, it was interesting because it was a fluke, and it was Battle of the Bands, and so you had to, like, you know, it, I think it's, like, the most memorable because it's like, it's like if the first time you have sex. You always remember that first time. Is this the one that you beat 10,000 people in one? Yes. Well, you had to go, it was like a state fair thing, you know, and I entered it off the cuff. And I, what it was is I, I was in uh, South Carolina and I ended up, um, I was in South Carolina and I ended up uh, seeing bands out there and watching what they were doing. And I was like, man, I'm bringing that back home with me, what I saw. And um, then the next thing I know is it's like, you know, um, my grandfather, you know, said, hey, why don't you do this, this festival? So I did it. And then, I mean, I was shocked. We, you know, our band won. So when we won, I was just, I mean, I was ecstatic, you know, because I was like, but I, I mean, I, I didn't, you, I wasn't really thinking about it. I just went up there and did my thing and things just kind of fell in place and that it was just, it was really great. So from there, we went on to like the state championship and, you know. There you have it. My first, my first love, and then I was just like, I, I was addicted after that. I mean, you know, I, I, I just was like, I was in a band, and then from the band, it's like, you know, recording, and you know, I started out young doing it, but I did it because I loved it. It's like, like again, it's like I just think if somebody has to coax you into doing something, um, I call them stage moms. A lot of stage moms do that. Mm -hmm. it, it, the kid has to want to do it. I mean. Of course. I, I have a person who's like, Mom, take me to the, you know, take me to this, take me to that. Mom, I want to do it, you know. Nice. And my mom was kind of, you know, I love my mother. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, in the early years, she was a little more like, you know, okay, I'll take you, you know. And I'm like, you know, excited to do all this stuff. But I just enjoyed it. It was fun, you know. It, was, it, just, it just was, I don't know, like eating ice cream or something. <laughs> Very nice. That's good. You gotta gotta love the things you do. It kind of sounds like uh, how I got into DJing. It's the same thing. You get that bug when you get up in front of people, and then exactly keep doing. Well, yeah, it. like you you really love what you do. So it's like you know that's what I tell people to do. It's like if you love what you do, no matter if it's like uh, like clay pot, if it's sewing, whatever it is. I mean, you know. If, if you enjoy it and, and you will eventually make a lot of money at it, you will, if you keep doing what you're doing, you know, but to me, it's like, there's just a lot of people that aren't happy doing what they're doing. And then they make everybody else around them miserable. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, uh, that's the one thing, um, 
I, I had just a, I had a recent in a magazine interview and they asked about that. They said, you know, what, what's one thing that you would advice that you would give to, you know, kids or uh, people coming up in the business. And I'd say, don't listen to your family or your friends. <laughs> I mean, it's like, there's a, there's like, I'm a very spiritual person, but um, my father is a, you know, he was a deacon and very biblical person. But uh, one thing that he always, he would, uh, the one thing I learned from him was a lot of biblical terms, and it's like there is no honor in a prophet's home. <laughs> it's it's like a biblical saying, and yeah. what's so funny is it's true. It's like, you know, you could be you could be Michael Jackson, or you could be Bill Gates, or you could be you could be worth a hundred billion dollars. You could have all the success in the world, and you know your parents are gonna be like, well, you know, you didn't make a hundred and two billion. <laughs> You know, you're just like, thanks. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. There's some people that nothing's ever good enough. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, or, you know, your parents are just, you got to love them. But, you know, there's always something. There's always, you know, there, there's always more you could do. I mean, everybody that I've talked to, there's not one person. Well, maybe you. I don't know. There's not one person that I have spoken with. Well, actually, no, I take that back. He, now he was weird, but he he told me <laughs> he was like he had the perfect upbringing, no drama, nothing. But he married a crazy lady, so go figure. So, but I mean, I don't know anybody that I've met that that hasn't said that they've you know had family members or you know friends, family or significant other that hasn't like said something negative to them while trying to go for what they want. I think mine is my mom constantly telling me to clean my house when she visits. Oh, <laughs> and even if I clean it, it's never clean enough. So, okay, I'm gonna be honest. To all the guys watching, that's just a guy thing, man. I mean, I, honestly, I feel like I'm part guy, but I'm not. Okay, I'm not. It's not put that out in the press. No, you are Start 100 percent woman. No, um, I mean, but it's it's a guy thing. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's it's very rare for a man to be like super super clean, and if he is. I mean, he's usually, I mean, you know, metrosexual. <laughs> <laughs> there's something behind it. There's something behind that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, you know, that, hey, I am looking for my next gay hubby. So, anybody <laughs> out there want to send in the paperwork, just go ahead, you know, submit it. <laughs> Through your agent, of course. Yeah, exactly. There you go. But, um, yeah, I mean, see, your mom will always, I mean, let's do this test, Mike. Sit there and get some maids, clean it all up, and she will be like, you know, finding something wrong. Because, yeah, she'll find something. She will. She'll be like, yeah, I'll tell you what. I have a German grandmother. That is the worst. I sat here and literally I elbow greased my entire home because I knew she was going to come to visit. And you know what she did? You know what she did? And, and this is a true story. I swear on the Bible. This is what she said to me. She goes, she pulls out. She pulls out my refrigerator and she says, ah, Darcy, that is dirt behind it. Nice. Sounds like a military inspection. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Who's going to go behind the refrigerator? Like, oh, yes, everybody, come to my home and, oh, look at my dirty, back of my dirty refrigerator. Yeah, let's have a party. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe she did that, but it's like she, that's exactly what she did. And it was like the biggest joke forever and I'm, I'm gonna actually like forward this to her so she can see this <laughs> yeah right definitely she'll get a yeah. kick out of it my mom's gonna be laughing I'm sure so this over to your mother and hey mom what's, what's your mom's name Lois Lois listen Lois it's a man thing you know just deal with it it's just okay. as long as there's no like dirty like underwear in front of his door you're doing good I don't do that yeah see, that's that's good so it's trying you I've seen seen some friends of mine's places that I mean, Lord have mercy. I bet. I've, uh, I will not say their name. We've had uh, some DJs stream live and they turn on their camera and I'm like, oh yeah, you might want to turn that off or change your view. <laughs> it's like, come on, man, at least clean up in the camera view. It's like dead rats hanging. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, you. Some of the things I, I was reading about that with you that I thought was really interesting. Most downloaded celebrity on the internet in 2003. That was impressive. Yeah. 
I was excited about that. And uh, and you had a ringtone also. Yes. Which was most downloaded. You can actually got a customized ringtone too. Wow. So you can call in and and they will hook you up. Awesome. So. And uh, yeah, so I was really excited. I was really excited about that. When that opportunity came, I was like, hey, I mean, it actually plays on my phone. It, it, and, I, and I actually, you know, you're doing good when you like your own ringtone. Right? Is it on? Do you use it as your ringtone? I do. It's great. And because <laughs> people go, man, that's really cool. Where do you get that? I'm like, uh, <laughs> and I'll, you know, a lot of times I'll be like this, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, people don't know it's me. What about, you know? You just don't want people to bother you sometimes. So I'll be grocery shopping and people will go, oh, that's a cool ringtone. Because it goes, it goes super, super bad at the beginning. Yeah, and it goes, yeah. right here is super bad. And so when it says that, it's almost like it's talking to me. So it's, you know, it's pretty cool. That's awesome. I get excited. I love it. <laughs> so it's probably easier to ask you, what, what don't you do? Or what are you not good at? Give me something that you're not good at. That is so easy, Mike. <laughs> That is so easy. Uh, I do not draw. Okay. I am not. I can. I am not an artist. You know. And me and um, you know one of the guys from the production team here um, on the film I'm working at. He's like, well, you can learn anything, and you know, you can learn to draw and blah blah. blah. And I'm like, yeah, that would take me a while. <laughs> It's like when we play Pictionary with my friends, it's like I'm the last. I'm like, you know, that kid at school, the fat kid that nobody picks. I'm like, oh, pick me. And everybody's like, uh, uh, okay, Darcy. <laughs> Aww. I can guess. Let me tell you. I can guess. You just I, can't draw. But, I mean, it was bad. I had to draw a pizza, and, and people didn't know what the hell it was. They're like, what is that, you know? <laughs> And it, it's it's just I can't draw. I just that's something I'm just not good at. I just I don't know. That's it. I try. I really do try. But I mean, even my stick stick men look kind of weird. Yeah, I can't so, draw a straight line either. So don't feel bad. Well, you know, in school, I don't know. In your school, did they have like um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the class, you know, the draw art class and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Well. I did it. I did that art class, and it's like my guy looked like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> he just—it was like all weird and stuff. But I don't know. My teacher likes me. You know, he thought I was kind of funny, so I think he, he saw that I—I I really did try. <laughs> you won him over with personality instead yeah, of art. I did because uh, I was like, I tried. I, I, he could see. I mean, I would stay extra, and I was like, damn it. You know, and then I had this one guy, he just didn't do, sh I mean, it's like he could spark a, a Mona Lisa. It was just, he would just be like, oh, you know, <laughs> he'd be talking. And then, and then next thing you know, you see this paper and it's like this amazing, you know, thing like, it was just uh, like some, like one of those old paintings in a museum. And, and mine looked like, you know, a five-year-old drew it. It was horrible. But, you know, I was just like, eh, some things you can't, I was like, get on a stage, buddy. Get on a stage. <laughs> exactly. Let's hear you sing. Yeah. So you mentioned the movie you're working on. Can you expound on that a bit? Well, there's actually two movies that I'm really excited about working on, but I, I cannot, can, I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. Okay. But the one, yeah, not, but I'm really excited. So, Mike, I will let you know. You'll be the, one of the first. So. Please do. Please do. And there's going to be some really well-known people that are going to be, I can't say, but it's going to be really, it's a really, really great story. Both of them are really great stories. But um, right now, I just uh, wrapped up, um, Comic-Con is actually, is it, it's going on right now, right, everybody? Yeah, okay, so Comic-Con is on right now, yep. and they are right now promoting the mechanic. So I want everybody to go to, I, I don't even know, yeah, go on your yeah, go on your smartphones and it's and your tablets, everything, and download the app, the mechanic. Um, the one thing about uh, this that has not been done, and I got to tell you, it's like the first of its kind. Um, do you remember, um, you know, when you're a little kid, your parents give you those books that are like the different stories? Mm -hmm. Pick and your you, own. Yeah, you choose your own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what this is. Get out of here. It yes. It is, and I'm I'm so excited about it. So that's where the werewolf uh, costume and all that came in. So, um, well, it wasn't a costume; it was more like 
like a prosthetic procedure. <laughs> I saw the video of them making you up. That was, it was, wow. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. And I got to tell you, Michael DeRosa, I mean, he has, he has worked on, I mean, some of the biggest projects out there. And he is amazing. I mean, and he's such a sweetheart. And, you know, he was, I mean, he was just a pleasure to work with. But, I mean, you know, you have to go in through, uh, I mean, contacts. I mean, they had to paste hair on me. I had hair on my chest like a week later. <laughs> Stuff off and, you know, the um, director and the producer, they're all like, you know, contacting me. They're like, are you sure you're okay? Are you sure you're okay? And, you know, I'll, I'll talk to Michael. We'll figure something out. And I was like, no, I'm okay. I was like, yeah, a little hair on my chest, you know. Yeah, that's probably probably a good conversation piece at the pool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I'm from Europe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But, but it's, a, it's like a movie maze. That's what it. That's what the whole um, the movie's about. Mm -hmm. Or you know, different stories and and the viewer picks their own ending. So um, I was really really excited to be a part of it. And you know, um, Lundmark Pictures and uh, they were they're really did an amazing job and Eric shout out to Eric Lundmark and Rishi Thaker I mean they they were they they were really awesome so right. we, had yeah. a, we had a really good time on set and that's the thing I mean we were working some long hours but I but Mike I'm going to tell you about the werewolf costume that I did not have to, not told anybody yet but I mean you you guys have got to think okay so I'm encased in a wolf costume and I don't did you see the fingers yes Okay, so the fingers, they, they ended up, um, him and his assistants, they put, uh, uh, you know, fingers on me and they basically infused them to my hand. Well, then, right before we're about to, to start filming, they're like, okay, you need to start doing it. So that takes a while to do. But once those things are on, I mean, all right, people, you got to think about it. Me going to the bathroom or eating is not an option. <laughs> So, you know, that's what was the hard thing. Because, I mean, I'm not going to ask a PA and say, hey, can you come over here and wipe my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask that. So, it was just, um, it, it was like a definite experience because I was like, you know, having to keep my adrenaline up. And then I didn't want to drink too much water and um, having to do those scenes. But it's like, it gave me a new appreciation for those zombie movies, let me tell you. I bet. Like, oh my God! But I will say, I crossed that off the bucket list. You know, that was that was something that um, uh, me and my assistant we we had like a, a a get to they had a get together, and my me and my assistant went in and we got to see like a behind the scenes screening, and uh, we walked in and I tell you what, it was crazy, Mike. I mean, it my own image creeped me out <laughs> so. yeah. well I will say you make a great you make a great she-wolf well, what I liked about it was the uh, I, I'm a big like classic movie guy and I, I like that they kept the werewolf look you know it wasn't all like CGI and digitized it was very classic movie magic classic movie makeup it was really good so I, I, I dig that some of that stuff out there it's like sometimes if they they do the kiss method keep it simple stupid yeah. you know I mean sometimes it's like it's there's so much going on. It's just the simplest things can scare the living shit out of you. Yeah. Out of you. Sorry. Sorry for those underagers. Crap out of you. Nah, you're good. On our station, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's, it really will. It's like you know, it, I mean, like I said, it scared me when I walked in the room. We were just like, oh my god, you know, freaked me out. <laughs> That's cool. I'm still trying to decide if I would run from you or not. So. Well, I will say this. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody was around me on set. Everybody, you know, everybody, we were like a family. And yeah. I, it was interesting, you know, because I'm still me. But then once you put that on, people treated me different. <laughs> and they did. It was just, I'm like, hey. And so I'm like trying to be so not to scare some of the people because I was scaring some of the crew members. So I was like trying to be kind of goofy me. And I was like, hey, how well, you doing? You were drooling a bit, though. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Towards the end, it was just like, oh my God. Yeah, it was oh, like, yeah. it was like my dog Bella here yeah. all over me for a treat. That was a funny video that you posted. I enjoyed it. I thought it was like, good. Yeah, I was. it was the end of the day and I was like, you know, I didn't know when um, they were going to let, you know, me have, see any of the footage. And 
you know, it was just like I was starving and I was in the mood for something to eat and I hadn't eaten, I hadn't really drank anything. And so, you know, somebody mentioned steak and then it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, I got in my inner dog or something. It was weird. Now I know why dogs do that. I say like, you were really in role. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, honestly, it really does happen when you're, um, it, like there's been characters that I've played where I've had to, you know, wear wigs and prosthetics and different things, contact lenses or, um, you know, just look completely different for the role. And you do, when you start looking different, you do start becoming that character. It's really interesting because I did feel completely different in that costume, at, you know, when we got, when they basically peeled it off me. Um, it was it was a definitely interesting uh, uh, way that I felt. I felt like you know I just came out of my mother's womb again. <laughs> nice. It was like <sighs> you know they had to take it off me. I'm sure it felt good. So what is, besides these two projects uh, musically? Do you have anything in store for us for 2013 or beyond? Oh yeah, um, I've got a song now that I've got to say I'm like chomping at the bit to like show you, I, especially my, you're going to love it. Um, it I, I'm really excited, but it's called It's My Life and um, it's going to be, it's by EDM and uh, it's, 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 it's my life and it's a really, really, really uh, good song. Like it's got a lot of uh, uh, club beats and stuff that you can really like uh, yeah dance to and bop your head to and excellent i mean i i would say it's going to be the next anthem song it's nice. like an electronic it's electronic dance yeah that's that's our stuff so yeah that's great. i mean i'm telling you you're gonna you're gonna want to you're gonna want to play it I and i can't will, wait. i'm definitely gonna be uh, i'm really excited to for you to hear it because i'm i'm like a proud mother of this well maybe after it drops we can do a follow-up interview with that Perfect. one well, I'm I'm really looking forward to it, and the, and the music video. We're right now um, in talks with several of the sponsors, and we're getting everything wrapped up with the music video and the tour. So hopefully, we'll be coming out to check you out, and oh, who yeah. knows, you'll be in the video. I would love that. If you come to New York, that'd be awesome. Let me know. We'll uh, we'll broadcast it right on the site. Well, I mean, we're doing we're going to be doing a tour, and we're going to be going everywhere. So I want the fans to know that because I keep having people tell me, "Are, are you going to be here? Are you going to be here?" And I definitely want to go to Europe because um, I have so many wonderful fans in Europe that I mean, uh, they're just they're so wonderful and so awesome, and and uh, I can't wait to go out there. And you know, I do have a lot of relatives in Europe too, so I, yes. I'm going to see them too. Excellent. Got to brush up on some of my. I got to brush up on some of my uh, German too, though. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I'm I'm excited to I'm excited to go to Australia and I really want to go to Japan. That's that's the one thing that I'm uh, that's like on my bucket list. I think it was Japanese in another life. I don't know. Maybe I love the culture out there. That would be uh, it's on my list to go to. Yeah, it's it's really really it's a really cool place. So. And I've, I've just had friends that have come back from Japan and just, I don't know, I'm just always fascinated by the food and the culture. So I think in a formal life I was Japanese or something. <laughs> May have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. What about uh, what about some of your charities? I know we're getting close to your time here, but uh, I know you're very, very involved in charities. Um, so I thought maybe there's a couple you'd like to talk about. Uh, well, there's a there's a lot of actually charity work that I've been doing the last couple of years with uh, Safe Passage. Um, they're an amazing they're an amazing uh, charity which they do domestic violence. Um, they for basically for battered women and children. They uh, you know give them a safe haven to go to. Uh, no place like Hope. I, I did um, a charity event for them where I was one of their celebrity uh, hosts um, for the event with uh, director Martin Guigui. And um, we, it's for horses and stuff. Oh, here we go. Here's here's one of my babies now. He's crying. Say hi to me. It's Gizmo. <laughs> hi, Gizmo. No. Oh, can I have a kiss? Can I have a kiss? Oh. Well, Gizmo was Gizmo was actually a rescue. So that is another charity that I'm, I'm I really do a lot for is you know animal charities. No place like hope. Um, 
basically they need they need funds for horses that are uh, you know people that just uh, have no place to go that they kill them oh. and and so I mean I got to tell you if anybody wants a horse please go to No Place Like Hope uh, and you know look them up on Facebook and you know you got the money get a horse I mean I travel so much so it's like when when things start dying down, I'm at least going to buy me five or six horses. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I've also helped with uh, uh, no hate, uh, no hate campaign about bullying. That's a big thing. Um, a lot of, you know, people um, have uh, died unfortunately from, uh, you know, being bullied, and it's just that's a horrible epidemic that's actually going on, especially in our country right now. Mm -hmm. And. Um, uh, I'm actually going to be working on getting my own charity together. It's kind of going to be like a hub to where I'm going to be able to funnel uh, donations to all different charities nice. across, kind of like what Bill Gates does. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you know, he had all these billionaires that funneled in all this money to basically help charities worldwide. And so that's what I want to do because it's like, I'll be honest. On my bucket list, if in my in my house in my um, bathroom, I have a. I think and everybody out there do this, Michael. If you don't you don't have this, you need to have this now. But um, a uh, make yourself a poster board. I call it a vision board. And on the vision board, what you need to do is you need to have um, you know what you want in life, and you need to have like what kind of house you want, where you want your career to go, how much money you want to make. Um, you, just all these all these different kind of things that you want um, in life and the one thing that I have on there is I want to be Michael Jackson in the like the like helping the most charities in the world that's like on my bucket list so that's the one thing I want to do because you know my grandfather always taught me he's like you know there's no luggage racks in a hearse and you know it's great and all doing music and acting and films and all that stuff but at the end of the day you know yeah we're all gonna die I mean and I hate to say that like uh, so morbid but you know it, it's it's sad but it's true and so I would like to leave back a legacy something to leave you know to help people to learn That's Does that make, you know I mean I mean it's sad I mean look at him he was gonna be killed Aww. he was gonna kill me my dog, my, my dog was a rescue also, so I'm oh, a big, good. big fan oh, of that. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, he's a hound mix. His name's Toby. So they're very loyal. Oh, he is. He's a great dog. I've had him for seven years now, so. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Gizmo would he would attack. I mean, I don't care if Bigfoot came in here. I don't care if King Kong came in here. Look, he's like four pounds, and he he would just he would eat. Hold on, I'll, I'll just show you how much. Because um, we have like some of the production guys here. Wait, wait! Don't, don't, just don't! You don't hit me like that. Just, just come near me and watch it go. <laughs> like, he's like, don't touch my mommy. He's like, nice. I will, I will kill you. I will kill you. You know. She's a fierce one. He, yeah, he is. Oh my god. So he's the little ones. I'm terrified I'm gonna be on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and and he's gonna and she's gonna go, oh cute dog, and rip him <laughs> off, you know. Just be like. Well, I don't have an arm now, and thanks to Darcy Donovan, but you know what I mean. <laughs> a good thing you can't get me through the uh, the Skype. Yeah, yeah, he's usually pretty good until like if somebody touches me or, you know, even like they're gonna come near me, he's he doesn't like it. He's, it's and it's funny. I I have to admit I love I love him. He's my little he's my little baby boy. He's my little baby boy. So you uh, you have a lot going on and you seem to not be slowing down at all coming up. I'm excited for the new music to come out. You're going to have to keep me posted on that. I will do that. You will be one of the first. You're a sweetheart and I, and I definitely will do that and, and I appreciate all the love and support and thanks to all your all your fans out there and, and for everybody for you know being so supportive and I, I do, really appreciate it. I do have one more question to ask and then uh, I'm going to stop the recording but don't hang up um, so they can close out. But I want to ask, because obviously, you know, a lot of people remember you from Anchorman. And that's, uh, you know, historically very funny movie, uh, instant classic. And I want to know, because everybody always talks about it, like, you know, what it would be like working with Will Farrell. But what was it like, you know, on set with him? Do you have any, I don't know, any funny stories that you're allowed to share or anything like that? Yeah, that? well, 
I got to say, um, working with Will Ferrell was, excuse me, it was amazing. I mean, he is, he is hilarious. And um, also, I got to tell you, uh, Adam, Adam, the director, Adam is just, I mean, you can't ask for a better director. Um, it, it's, it's just very funny because uh, we were on set and, <laughs> you know, it's like Will's the type of guy behind the scenes. He was just like, he just, yeah, he's very like, he's watching what he's doing, but the minute the camera rolls, he's in character. So he's a little quiet, you know, he's just observing, but it's like, it's just crazy. It's just the switch that, which I understand that switch. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, you know, I'm goofy and I'm, I'm fun loving and this and that. And you know, I have my quirky side, but when I get on stage, it's like a completely different person. So I, I get that. I understand. And especially even too, when the camera comes on, you just go into this different place. So, you know, it's funny because, you know, I've even had, I've even had friends, you know, I have gay friends that are like, you know, when you were performing on stage, girl, you know, you about turned me straight. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? And they're like, you just get this like sexiness, sexy aura about you. It's like, what's going on? You know what I'm like? I don't know. I don't know. I just get in that mode when I'm dancing with the dancers and, you know, just giving it to the stage, but, or to the crowd and on stage. But, um, the one thing about that was, I will tell you that was very interesting was, is so Adam, the director, he comes up to me and he says, Darcy, he says, um, let's throw Will off. I'm like, how the hell do you throw Will Ferrell, king of comedy off? You know, that's what I'm thinking. He's the king of improv. How do you throw him off? And they're like, you know, uh, say something. They wanted me to say something a little R-rated to him. I, I won't be, I won't repeat it, but it, cause it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but um, So I said something, uh, you know, R-rated to him. And I was like, hey, blah, 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 blah. And he just, without blinking an eye, I mean, not even so much as an eyelash, he was like, well, I'll blah, 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 and I'll blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, and, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it was pretty funny, but I think it because it was so racy, it did not make, it didn't make the any of the DVDs, even on the extended version. Wow. So I was a little sad about that, but it, it was pretty funny, you know, and it's, it's funny because he did not. It was like, yeah, he I did. I mean, I can't it, imagine anything would throw that guy off. No, I mean, really, it didn't. He was just very. It was like, hello, I'm very calm and collected, and whatever you say, you know, you could call him the biggest blah 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 blah. You know, go off on him, and he just sit there and come right back at you. It was just, it was actually really hilarious, you know, and. Um, and just so everybody knows, the entire script, I mean, I've got the script, but a lot of that, majority of that was improv. That's what I've heard. I've actually heard a lot of that stuff was just, they just let it go. Yeah, no, you heard it at, from me. I mean, it was, uh, a lot of it was improv. I mean, the, what I said, I'll tell you, what I said, I didn't even think it was going to get in the movie. Because originally what was written on the, on the page was not what... Um, I mean, I just improved it. Nice. And now it's like everywhere I go, people always, you know, they say that line. It's like yeah. hilarious. So, you know, it was, it was uh, definitely, I had such a great time. And, you know, it's like they, they are a great crew. Um, it's, it's like a mini family over there. And, and it's just, you know, you, when you're around great directors, that's where you get great projects. When you've got great, you know, everybody enjoys <laughs> together that's when you get great stuff and I mean the movie was hilarious oh yeah it was you know I really enjoyed doing it and and um, I'm looking forward to you know working with Adam on other projects too so I'm excited excellent well we're excited to see what comes out of that well thank you very much I appreciate it <laughs> well hey I just want to say thank you so much Michael of course. you're a sweetheart and i uh, big kiss and hugs to you know all the fans out there and um, for also supporting Michael and and the show and everything and um, hope you come and visit my me on my Facebook and say hello and on my Twitter and DarcyDonovan.com. Um, we also are going to be you know donating 
Uh, a lot of the proceeds from my album go to charities such as, you know, helping little guys like this have a better home. So, um, right? They, they <laughs> out. Help me out. Maybe I should put him on stage. Right. Dancer costume. Um, but uh, a lot of the uh, proceeds are going to be helping, you know, we help people with diabetes, cancer research, um, you know, helping uh, abused women. And so, you know, that's that's the thing. It's like I'm trying to spread the wealth here, you know. Superwoman. Superwoman. There you go. Hey, maybe Excellent. I'll make something out of that. You should. All right, everybody. Well, you've been listening to RoughHouseRadio.com. This is DJ401K with Darcy Donovan live on Skype. Thank you, Darcy, for the time. Well, thank you, Michael. And, uh, and this is DJ Gizmo. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to uh, kill this recording, and then uh, I will talk to you real quick before you get out. Okay.